Thank you for checking out this no spoilers movie review for the movie Best Worst Movie. Yes, that is the title of it, Best Worst Movie. It's a 2009 release. It is currently streaming on Shudder when I'm recording this. Hopefully it's still on there. And uh, it's a documentary film. And I would say that if you're watching this, trying to figure out if you want to watch it or not, please know I, I really would recommend that you see the film that this is covering first. Uh, it's a documentary about, not so much about the, the making of the film Troll 2, but kind of about what has happened since Troll 2 came out. It's kind of about um, the, the fandom that has kind of cropped up after the fact because, like the title says, it's been considered the best worst movie out there, which actually... I don't know. Um, I might contend that the movie The Room by Tommy Wiseau is the best worst uh, best worst movie out there, but it, Troll 2 probably has to be like the best worst horror movie, I would think. I mean, it is crazy. If you haven't seen it, definitely go see that uh, and then check out Best Worst Movie because it is a very good companion piece. It gives you some really good insight into what are some of these people like who were in the movie, who created the movie, who worked on the movie, um, yeah, and, and the documentary is actually done by the guy who plays the main character, Child. He was a child actor in this, <laughs> and his career didn't go anywhere because of this terrible film. So, um, he kind of covers that a little bit and talks about his involvement with it, but then he also, you know, goes around to a bunch of the cast members, and it's just kind of cool to see their personalities, their feelings about the movie, and the, um, and especially like the director and his wife, who is the writer of the film, who didn't even speak English. Okay, I'm I, I'm not going to spoil too much more. I mean, there there was a language barrier that really kept directing from happening, is what it sounds like, which is part of the reason you get such a bad product. So um, there's a lot more of that type of stuff kind of talked about in the documentary, which is very interesting because then you can kind of understand why it's so bad. It's not it's not just more bashing and just looking at the fandom that's cropped up since. It's kind of looking at why is it so bad. You know, some ideas of, well, this was going on and this was going on. So it's cool for that reason. So if you're, especially if you're a fan of how bad Troll 2 is, Best Worst Movie is a must. It is a must documentary for you. And I feel like it is well put together. So, um, I'm going to go through some of my notes. Hopefully this doesn't go too long. I actually took a lot of notes for some reason. Really enjoyed watching this. A lot of fun. Um, it's kind of a funny introduction. Uh, they introduce, um, what's his name? George Hardy. So he's kind of the focal point of the documentary, and he played the father in the movie Troll 2. Uh, and he's got some famously bad acting in that film, some really killer lines um and you'll see what that is if you if you know troll 2 then you know what a bunch of the lines are i'm sure and if you can't remember them when you watch the documentary they go over that so that's another good thing it kind of reminds you of some things if it's been a while since you've seen it and so the i love the fact that they chose george hardy as their focus for this documentary because he's a very interesting guy he seems like a crazy nice guy like super nice He's very quirky as well. He's a very like bubbly, energetic dude, but he's also very scattered at the same time. And he's just a really interesting dude. To be honest, I think if they just did an entire documentary just on this guy, his life and how he lives and how he is as a person, that would be a great documentary. And, you know, you get a little bit of that in the film. So he kind of ends up being a little bit of a narrator for it because he's followed so much in it. And I like that. It was really great. Uh, oh, a frame of reference, Troll 2 came out in 1990, so it has been some time since it was out. Um, mm, 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 mm. Oh, okay, I wrote down that Mike, Michael Paul Stevenson, who's the guy who did the documentary, who was in Troll 2 as the kid, I, I wrote down that it's really cool to see someone who was actually in the film going back and really revisiting it in the form of doing a documentary. I've seen documentaries about films before, but it's not usually done by people who were involved with it or were in it and i feel like done this way it seems a lot more personal and it seems a lot more like cool and insidery if that makes sense um it's fun to see what people are up to now <laughs> whether the film like ruined their careers or they're still working or they have somewhat of a career or a convention a horror convention career based off of this film which that kind of happens with some of them um uh, and it's especially interesting for, 
for people who admit that they kind of did a terrible job. Like, it, it's cool to see, like, who's accepting of how bad they were in the film and who is denying that they were bad in the film. And, and that's just kind of fun to see. And also, just like I said, what they're doing now with their lives. That kind of stuff is always interesting. Uh, it delves a lot into the fandoms uh, that arise from it being a terrible movie. Uh, it kind of hits how, like, it just didn't do well when it first came out. And with a lot of really bad movies, it uh, started gaining some cult status over time. And then people were like, oh, my God, you have to see how bad this film is. Then that person takes it and says, hey, now you, you need to see how bad this is. And it just, like, grows and grows. And uh, that's a really cool aspect that they show a lot of. And people just being, like, excited about Troll 2. And it's this funny thing that I realized watching it is that you you kind of, like, ironically like it at first. Because you're like, oh, well, this is just so bad. But it's so entertaining because it's so bad because I can laugh at it. But at some point, when you continually watch it and you continually say you love it, it kind of goes all the way around. It becomes, goes, like, full circle. And then you just end up feeling like you legitimately like the film. And you could kind of see that emotion on display within the documentary. And it was cool. So, yeah. Um, another thing. Do, 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 do. Let me see. Uh, it's crazy to think that people can amass a following from being in a in something this terrible. It really is. But, you know, I'm... I'm someone who's who's guilty of it. I love The Room by Tommy Wiseau so much. If I had the chance to meet Tommy Wiseau, I'd be all about it. And that movie's terrible. It's just so bad. But I don't know. Like it, it's it's something about the passion too. That's another thing. And they kind of touch about touch on that in the documentary. Um, the documentary drives point uh, drives home the point that entertainment is entertainment. It kind of doesn't matter. Uh, what is good and what is bad anyway is kind of a question that's put out. Uh, and I wrote down, Michael Bay makes awful, awful movies, but people see those. He just has money behind him. Yeah, and that's kind of a, one of the things they kind of touch on is just like, what is entertainment? It's kind of like an individual thing. So some people may legitimately be more entertained by movies that just aren't good. Some people may just be sucked in with the enthusiasm of a film, whether it's good or bad. Uh, in cases like I was saying, like Michael Bay, uh, I feel like he makes terrible movies, in my opinion, but people go see it. And I think it's a combination of the practical effects always, or the, the CGI always looks good because he's got tons of money. There are all these explosions. And he usually gets really fun properties to work with, like Transformers, even though I think he just, like, murders those things terribly. But, you know, there's always going to be a fan base for that. So it's like, what is entertainment for you in particular? Um, these people, people involved in the movie are real characters themselves, I wrote down. And uh, it makes the documentary kind of on par with Troll 2 in that sense. Because you can see the essence of Troll 2 in some of these people's psyches, some of these people's personalities, mannerisms, all that. Obviously, you see it in their faces because they were on there, but um, it's cool. Uh, so the writer, I found this really interesting, the writer of the film had said that the movie is a vampire film, but they are, but since they're vegetarian, but they're vegetarians, like the vampires are actually vegetarians in it, uh, in Troll 2, and she did this because at the time she had a bunch of friends who had become vegetarian, and it was really annoying her, so she was all pissed off, so she wanted to write this script, basically like vilifying, uh, it, like, <laughs> vegetarians, it's, I don't know. It's it's weird. But you got to hear it for yourself. Uh, it's crazy how the director, Claudio Fragasso, still thinks it's good. He goes through all these things where he goes and ha interacts with people who love the movie because it's terrible. He gets questions about how terrible it is, all that stuff. And he still just, like, can't come to the realization that it's bad. At least someone like Tommy Wiseau with The Room, like, he embraces the fact that it's not good. Like, he knows it. And he's just like, hey, you know, success is success and fame is fame. So he and he's just gone off of that. I mean, he's done more films. He's he's doing Big Shark, which is a, a shark movie, I think, um, unless that's kind of a red herring. No pun intended. But um, so I wrote down, oh, no, the woman who played the mother needs some help. Like legitimately, there's some cringeworthy stuff in here where you're like someone is having some problems mentally and someone needs to help out. 
and that's kind of like a cringy thing in in this documentary but it's interesting and i mean it's real life you know what are you gonna do uh it works very well to make george the focal point yes um and he kind of like it, it follows him to the other people kind of it seems that they kind of used him as a gate as like the key to get to the other people to have them involved with the documentary and you kind of get that sense um and then the last thing that i had written down here and this was amazing to me so there's a part where george hardy goes to a horror convention and he's you know there to sign autographs for troll 2 and he, i guess he's not actually a horror film fan because his reaction to all the horror uh all the horror icons there and also the people attending it who are all dressed up and everything is funny but also kind of like oh because he seems like a cool guy but then he's like very judgy about these horror fans and i was watching it and he's just like oh these people and he goes like on and on and on about it. so it's like funny for a little bit and then it was just kind of kind of becoming like extremely judgy and a little offensive and then i was just like these are my people like these people he's talking about these are my people people i love the most i can't tell you how comfortable and happy i feel when i'm at horror conventions because everyone's there for the same love of horror and i don't think i've ever had any interactions at a single horror convention i've been to that has been negative with with other patrons there like everyone's just so nice to each other because you're all there for the same thing so that kind of like rubbed me the wrong way where i was just like these are wonderful people man like why are you being so judgmental it's just what they're into you know you are in troll too you have no no room to speak so anyway, um, so that's my coverage of it. I really think that this is a really good, uh, well, really, not really, really good, but it's a very solid documentary. It's a lot of fun, especially if you've seen Troll 2. And I mean, you can watch it if you haven't seen Troll 2 and you'll get enough of an idea. I think actually if you watch it and you haven't seen Troll 2, it's really going to make you want to see Troll 2 so you can experience how terrible it is. But I would recommend seeing Troll 2 first and then seeing this. I think... Pairing them together is very nice. They work well. So that said, uh, my five-star rating with half stars in play, I'm going to go ahead and give this a four-star rating. It is good. I recommend it. Um, yeah, it's it's good stuff. Anyway, um, I'd like to do some more uh, documentary reviews. This is the first one I've done, actually. And uh, I really like documentaries, especially horror documentaries. I'll tell you right now, one of my favorite ones that I can just recommend to you is the um it's called you're so cool brewster and it's a documentary that has to do with the behind the scenes of the filming of the original fright night film it is like over two hours but it doesn't feel like that because it is so well put together it is jam-packed with awesome information and just really cool stuff cool interviews it is phenomenal it i think it's the best horror documentary i've seen it's really amazingly good Ooh, actually that or nightmares in red white and blue that's another really good one that one has to do with just covering the horror genre in general and then subgenres, and it goes through each decade of horror and what the socio-political influences were and why these horror films are so popular tying into society and people's fears and anxieties and stuff like that at the time um super awesome that's more of like an intellectual level thing so kind of very two different things but i would highly recommend them you're so cool brewster and nightmares in red white and blue amazing so anyway thank you guys for checking this out please hit the subscribe button that's the least you can do for me if you like anything that i do if you don't like anything that i do why are you watching it um but i'm not complaining because keep watching it <laughs> that's great put some comments down there have you seen this uh have you seen troll 2 what are your thoughts we can you know get a little bit nerdy talk about some stuff and then give me a thumbs up if you want to don't have to but whatever Anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. And until next time, take, oh no, I just totally screwed. I was going to say, take it easy. <laughs> no, I'd never say that. Keep it brutal.